Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve ashabi ecma'in. Rabbi şrah li sadri ve yassir li amri ve ahlul uqdatu min lisani yafqahu kuli. Brothers and sisters uh, in Islam, first of all, before I begin, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all ourselves and our families and children and the entire society, community of Muslims and human beings, citizens of Canada and others, from this very vicious and deadly COVID-19, which has taken so many lives and has placed us in a very, very difficult situation. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift this punishment, this test from all of us, so that we can freely perform our duties to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the community. We are living in very, very difficult, critical times. And when I think of this, I remember a tradition attributed to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said that there will be times coming when the best prayer will be the prayer of a drowning man or drowning person. So we are like as if we are drowning and we are imploring and beseeching and begging the Lord of mercy to deliver us out of uh, the water which may take our lives. So that is the situation we are in. So we need to be intensely turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance, making a lot of istighfar, because the Messenger of Mercy said that when you consistently and constantly make istighfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open doors. Allah will send down relief and healing and, and, and uh, peace. So let us never fail in establishing that consistency in istighfar. Now the topic I'm going to cover today is, inshallah, three points. Number one, how do we prepare ourselves for welcoming the guest of honor, Ramadan, which is Sayyid Shuhur, uh, the, the Lord of all the Islamic months. How do we prepare ourselves in Shaban for welcoming the blessed month? And then what are we supposed to be doing uh, in the month of Ramadan in order to maximize the blessings of Ramadan? And then how do we keep that, the lessons that we must have learned from Ramadan so that our practice of Islam and our consciousness, our level of consciousness is raised to an enhanced level. The first point I'm going to discuss is preparing for Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the example, uh, Aisha Allahuanna and others reported that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, would focus uh, or greater uh, application to worship, intensification of worship and devotions in the month of Shaban in preparation for Ramadan. So he would fast more days in Ramadan in Shaban. However, closer to Ramadan, he would break it so that uh, to, not to set a precedent of joining Shaban with Ramadan. Shaban fasting is only voluntary, whereas Ramadan fasting is a basic institution, a crucial pillar of Islam. So Prophet wants to see that clearly make that distinction. And secondly, he would be more uh, the whole mindset that we develop in Shaban, because you know psychologists say there is the visualization and acting as if. So in order to for us to succeed, if you are, want to be a successful physician, you have to act as if, as if you already won, and then do the things that uh, that is required of you. So this is the concept here. Islam has these multi dimensions. It uh, approaches you from the physical, 
from the mental, imaginative, all kinds, all faculties. Human being is a unity. So that is why Shaban, we should visualize, uh, you know, overcoming the Ramadan, and we should intensely formulate that intention to learn about uh, how do it is, how do we uh, make our fasting better, how do we reap the maximum benefits uh, in Ramadan. And so preparing ourselves mentally and spiritually, also by learning the rules. Uh, many of us fail to understand that in Islam we have a form of ibadat, and then there is a spirit and soul of ibadat. And we need to focus more on the soul of ibadat. Uh, I will come to this uh, point next time, next uh, in the next, uh, you know, and I discuss uh, what we do in Ramadan. So having realized our responsibility to learn the rules of fasting, when we enter the month of Ramadan, we need to not only fulfill that obligation by observing the form of it, the basic fiqh rules of it, but also trying to realize the benefits of fasting, the spiritual benefits. Because all of ibadat in Islam, the sole purpose is to remake human being in a new mold. Uh, you know, when it comes to prayer, zakah, fasting and hajj, if you study deeply the soul of these ibadats, the function and the purpose is, the goal is to mold us so that we become responsible human beings, com compassionate, caring, and we should serve as the wise children of Allah SWT on earth as he wants us to live a life of responsibility and commitment to the well-being of, to enhance the quality of life, and fulfill our responsibilities to ourselves and to our spouses and our children, our parents and neighbors and society. You know, that is the purpose of ibadat. So when it comes to fasting, the main purpose, goal of fasting is to connect us, to make us understand that our real essence is the soul within us. You know, Islam being an integrated religion that treats human being as a, com a unity of mind, body, and soul, what happens most of the time is that we focus on the surface level. We are more concerned about the physical. And some go as far as concerning themselves with intellectual, developing the mind. But we forget the fact that the real essence of uh, human being is the soul that Allah has breathed into our mold, human mold or mold of the clay. And that is what we are. Because the body is going to be disintegrating in the ground, but the soul is what survives. So nurturing the soul, focusing on nurturing the soul one whole month. And also breaking that bad habits that we have acquired in the 11 months, this is the time for us to break free of them and develop better habits. So if you had the habit of smoking, billah, this is the time to cut it cold turkey. Break it the habit completely and replace it with the habit of zikr and doing something else. Because the psychologists say you cannot break a habit unless you replace it with a better habit. So people who work uh, completely cut off the habit of smoking, they will tell you that they did that not through medicine or other things, but successfully they managed to do it instead of making a smoking. As soon as this impulse comes, they make liquor and subhanallah, alhamdulillah, and also visualizing the harmful effects of, of smoking, you know, how it creates cancer and go and see the cancer of what, and then visualize it. Because this is what when we visualize and link something with, with harm, we will be better prepared to leave it. So any habit like that, bad habit, you have to associate it with pain and suffering and the opposite with pleasure. And that is the way to break the bad habit and acquire the new habit. So the bad habit we need to break in Ramadan, first of all, is to realize that 
as Imam Ghazali said, fasting is of three types. Vast majority of people fast on the physical level. Simply, they abstain from food and drink from dawn to dusk, but they are engaged in all sorts of haram things, watching television, video, and this and that. Frivolous activities. And then also they are thinking all the time during the day what kind of best dishes they have to prepare for iftar. So they, they say there is more consumption in Ramadan in the Muslim communities than in other months because Ramadan is the time they enjoy, get to enjoy the best of dishes. This is complete negation of the whole purpose of fasting. And Imam Ghazali says the third, second type of fasting people are those who don't do that, they stay away from haram and things like that, but yet their soul is not always connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the purpose of uh, fasting, the main purpose is to enhance our connection, strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and develop nurturing taqwa Allah. Uh, so this, the third type of people are those who concentrate on that. They they change uh, their diet habit, uh, eating only little as my, as little as, as needed for the body and to energy, and also avoiding all the wastage. Because I have been I'm really, really, I was alarmed to be invited to some gatherings of our brothers and sisters in Canada, where they would be making sixty dishes or hundred dishes in Ramadan. And they post it on the Facebook, and there are people maybe in the world, millions, who cannot even afford a one morsel of food to break their fast. So what kind of fasting is this? Because the, one of the main purpose of fasting is to develop the habit of compassion. Because fasting, whether you are a rich man or a poor man, it's a compulsory starvation. And one of the purpose there is to teach you what this man, the poor man who has no food and drink is going through day in, day, day out. So it will develop that empathy for the poor and the suffering and the less fortunate. So this is, we must learn this in our fasting. And another important point for us to consider in Ramadan is, unfortunately these days, we may not be able to full perform tarabi in the masajid. So the Taravi spirit is the Quran spirit. So in, to compensate, although you may you should pray in your home, uh, if you need to open the musaf to lead the prayer, do so. But you may also you should also make it a habit of listening to a beautiful recitation of the Quran. Make sure to listen at least to one juz of the beautiful recitation of the Quran, so that. We compensate for the deficiency that the, the habit that we have developed, going to the masjid and listening to that beautiful recitation from the Qurra, professional Qurra. And another point we need to remember in Ramadan is we need to strengthen our relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to, as Imam Ghazali said, reciting the Quran, we need to make, make sure that our tongue is involved in it, our mind is involved in it, and our soul is also involved in it. Otherwise, it's simply a ritual. So we need to recite with our tongue, and our mind need to absorb the meaning, and then we need to put it into practice. Our soul should be colored by the dye of the Quran. And this is the purpose of the recitation of the Quran. And of course, combining the knowledge with action, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us with that experiential knowledge, which is what we need to strive for. And finally, uh, when we come out of this Ramadan, the habits that we have learned, habit of zikr and enhanced prayers and of charities, we should continue in the remaining months. We need to develop this habit. Uh, this uh, vicar has to be a second nature and generosity and giving charity should be a second nature. We learn about Imam Shaf uh, Shafi Ramullah, the Imam that we, we are mostly Shafiites. You know, when he used to 
has this habit even though he was very poor uh, he would still come out every single day even if it is one dirham that he has he will do come out with that after asr to give charity because he learned from his study of islam that the prophet was the most charitable man so he want to develop that habit imitate the messenger of allah so i hope i have covered uh, these basic points now uh, if there is anything else the time i think is up i don't know i am not aware of the time i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to maximize the blessings of ramadan now one more point i will add we are missing juma in the masajid we are missing jamaat in the masajid we may be missing tarawih in the masjid so compensate for it by making sure as much as possible you recite uh, perform prayer with your family and also listen to the quran with the family beautiful recitation gather your children and listen to that beautiful recitation and i have an advice to parents with the little children play that muallim tape of minshawi every single day at least half an hour if you want to play it one hour and let the children hear it surely they will pick it up and they will be better reciters of the quran professional reciters of the quran without any effort on your part do so and you can also you know repair or relearn unlearn uh, relearn you know proper recitation of the quran may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and i have i want to announce that i have a, a course uh, which will be starting next sunday from 11:30 to 1 pm uh, two sessions two sundays so you may join us this is offered by the islamic institute of toronto and uh, you can find the link on islam.ca uh, so you can also share it with the group so where i will be discussing in detail the fiqh of ramadan as well as the spiritual aspects of ramadan also how do we compensate for the deficiencies we we are facing because of the challenges this difficult unprecedented situation muslim community and others are facing in the world today may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us continue to pray for all of us that allah protect us from these trials and tribulations and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us he help us to keep our faith the faith of our families and children and, and grandchildren so that they remain steadfast on the path of islam aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al muslimin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh